Lesson 1. How many rooms are there in your new house? Hey Anna, how many rooms are there in your new house? There are five rooms in my new house. That sounds spacious. What are you planning to do with all the extra space? I'm thinking of using one room as a home office and another as a guest bedroom. That's a great idea. Having a dedicated workspace can be really helpful. Yes, it will make it easier to focus on work and separate it from my living space. And having a guest bedroom is perfect for hosting friends and family. Exactly. I want to make sure they feel comfortable and have their own space. Have you thought about how you'll decorate the rooms? I have a few ideas in mind. I want to create a cozy and inviting atmosphere. That sounds lovely. Are you going for a specific theme or style? I'm leaning towards a modern and minimalist style with warm colors and natural elements. That sounds very trendy and welcoming. I'm sure it'll turn out great. Thank you. I'm excited to start furnishing and making it feel like home. I can imagine. It's always exciting to move into a new place and make it your own. Definitely. It's a fresh start and a chance to create a space that reflects my personality. I'm happy for you, Anna. I hope you enjoy every moment in your new house. Thank you, John. I appreciate your kind words. I can't wait to settle in. You're welcome, Anna. If you ever need help with anything, don't hesitate to ask. I appreciate that, John. Your support means a lot. Thanks again. No problem, Anna. Take care and have a wonderful time making your new house a home. You too, John. Wishing you all the best. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Anna. Until next time. Lesson 2. What did you dream of becoming when you were a child? Anna, what did you dream of becoming when you were a child? When I was a child, I dreamed of becoming a veterinarian. That's a wonderful dream. What inspired you to pursue that path? I always had a deep love for animals and wanted to help them. That's a noble aspiration. Animals bring so much joy to our lives. Yes, they do. I wanted to make a difference in their well-being. Did you have any specific experiences or moments that influenced your dream? I remember visiting a local animal shelter and being fascinated by the work the veterinarians did to care for the animals. It's amazing how such experiences can shape our aspirations. Absolutely. It ignited my passion for animal welfare and healthcare. Did you take any steps towards pursuing a career as a veterinarian? Yes, as I grew older, I volunteered at veterinary clinics and shadowed veterinarians to gain more insights into the profession. That's commendable. Practical experiences can provide valuable learning opportunities. It was an enriching experience, and it confirmed my desire to become a veterinarian. Did your dream of becoming a veterinarian eventually come true? No, my career path took a different direction, but my love for animals remains strong. 
Sometimes our dreams change as we grow, and that's perfectly fine. Exactly. Life takes unexpected turns, and it's important to adapt and find new passions. Is there any way you still incorporate your love for animals into your life? Absolutely. I support animal welfare organizations, volunteer at shelters, and have pets of my own. That's wonderful. It's great to continue finding ways to make a positive impact. Thank you, John. Life is full of possibilities, and it's important to follow our passions. Indeed. Wishing you joy and fulfillment in all your endeavors, Anna. Thank you, John. May you find happiness and purpose as well. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Anna. Take care and stay connected to your dreams. Until next time. Lesson 3. How much time do you spend on your work? Hey Anna, how much time do you spend on your work? It varies, but on average, I work around 8 hours a day. That's a good balance. How do you manage your time effectively? I prioritize tasks, set deadlines, and create a schedule to stay organized. That's smart. Do you take breaks during your workday? Yes, I take short breaks to rest and recharge every few hours. Taking breaks can help maintain productivity. What do you do during your breaks? I stretch, take a walk, or simply relax and clear my mind. Sounds refreshing. Do you work on weekends too? Occasionally, if there are pressing deadlines or important projects. It's important to have a balance between work and personal life. How do you achieve that? I set boundaries, prioritize self-care, and make time for hobbies and loved ones. That's a great approach. How do you handle work-related stress? I practice mindfulness, exercise, and engage in activities I enjoy to manage stress. Those are effective strategies. How do you stay motivated in your work? I set goals, celebrate achievements, and focus on the purpose behind my work. Having a sense of purpose can be a powerful motivator. How do you handle distractions? I minimize distractions by creating a dedicated workspace and using time management techniques. That's helpful. Do you have any tips for staying focused and productive? Prioritize tasks, break them into smaller steps, and tackle them one at a time. Simplifying tasks can make them more manageable. Thanks for the tips, Anna. You're welcome, John. I hope they help you too. Anything else you'd like to know? No, that's all for now. Thanks for sharing your insights, Anna. My pleasure, John. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Have a great day. You too, Anna. Take care and have a productive day. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 4. What kind of sports are popular in your country? Hi Anna, what kind of sports are popular in your country? In my country, football, soccer, is very popular. 
That's great. Football is a global sport. What else is popular? Cricket is also quite popular here. Ah, cricket. It's a beloved sport in many countries. Any other sports? Basketball has a growing fan base too. Interesting. Basketball is gaining popularity worldwide. Any more? Tennis and badminton are quite popular as well. Those are fun racket sports. Any traditional or unique sports? Yes, we have traditional martial arts like karate and taekwondo. Martial arts are fascinating. Anything else worth mentioning? Field hockey and kabaddi are popular too. Field hockey is thrilling to watch. What is kabaddi? Kabaddi is a contact team sport originating from South Asia. That sounds intriguing. Thanks for sharing, Anna. You're welcome, John. Sports bring people together, no matter where we are. Absolutely. Sports have a universal language. It was nice talking about them. Indeed. Thank you, John. Have a great day. You too, Anna. Take care and enjoy your day. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 5. Our friend's birthday is coming up. Hi Anna, our friend's birthday is coming up. What gift should we buy? Hmm, what are their interests or hobbies? They love cooking and trying new recipes. How about a cooking utensil, set, or a cookbook? Good ideas. They would enjoy that. Any other suggestions? Maybe a kitchen gadget or a personalized apron? Those are creative options. What if we get them a cooking class? That's a fantastic idea. They can learn new skills and have fun. Great. Let's look for cooking classes in our area. We can also consider a gift card to a gourmet restaurant. Excellent suggestion. They can have a special dining experience. Alternatively, we could plan a surprise dinner party for them. That's a thoughtful idea. They would appreciate it. We can decorate, cook their favorite dishes, and invite friends. It would be a memorable celebration. I like the idea. Let's make sure to get their favorite dessert too. Absolutely. Their favorite cake will be the perfect addition. We'll make their birthday extra special. They'll love it. Indeed. It's all about creating wonderful memories. We'll put our effort and love into the gift. They deserve it. Definitely. Birthdays are a time to show appreciation and care. Let's get started on the preparations. It will be a fantastic day. Agreed. Thanks for brainstorming ideas together, Anna. You're welcome, John. It's always fun planning surprises. I'm glad we're on the same page. 
Have a great day, Anna. You too, John. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Anna. Until next time. Lesson 6. Have you been to any nice beaches lately? Hi Anna, have you been to any nice beaches lately? Yes, I went to a beautiful beach last weekend. That sounds amazing. Which beach did you visit? It was called Paradise Beach. The name suits it perfectly. I've heard of Paradise Beach. Is it known for its clear water? Yes, the water was crystal clear and had stunning blue hues. That must have been breathtaking. Was the beach crowded? Surprisingly, it wasn't crowded at all. It felt peaceful and serene. That's great. Did you go swimming or engage in any water activities? Yes, I went swimming and also tried snorkeling. Snorkeling must have been exciting. Did you see any colorful fish? Yes, the underwater world was vibrant with fish of various colors. That's fascinating. Was there any special feature at the beach? There was a long stretch of white sand and gentle waves. Sounds like a perfect spot for sunbathing and relaxation. Absolutely. I enjoyed lounging on the beach and soaking up the sun. Did you bring any beach games or activities to enjoy? Yes, I brought a beach ball and played volleyball with friends. Beach volleyball is always fun. Did you have a picnic too? Yes, we had a picnic with sandwiches, fruits, and refreshing drinks. That sounds delightful. Did you capture any memorable photos? Yes, I took plenty of photos to remember the beautiful day. Great! It's nice to have those memories to cherish later. Indeed. It was a perfect day at the beach. I can't wait to go again. I'm glad you had a fantastic time. Beach days are the best. They truly are. Let's plan a beach trip together sometime. You're welcome, John. It was a pleasure talking about the beach. Have a wonderful day. You too, Anna. Take care and enjoy the day. Goodbye for now. Lesson 7. How about hosting a barbecue party this weekend? Hi Anna, how about hosting a barbecue party this weekend? That sounds like a great idea. I love barbecue parties. Awesome. We can invite our friends and have a good time. Definitely. What should we put on the menu? Let's have burgers, hot dogs, and grilled vegetables. Sounds delicious. We can also marinate some chicken and steak. Perfect. I'll bring my secret barbecue sauce for extra flavor. That's a great addition. We should have some side dishes too. How about coleslaw, potato salad, and corn on the cob? 
Those are classic barbecue sides. Our guests will love them. And let's not forget about refreshing drinks and ice-cold beer. Agreed. We'll make sure everyone stays hydrated and happy. Should we set up games or activities for entertainment? Yes. We can have a game of volleyball or set up a cornhole. That will keep everyone engaged and having fun. Great idea. I'll also prepare some music to create a lively atmosphere. Music always adds to the party vibe. It'll be fantastic. Let's make sure to have enough seating and shade for everyone. Good point. We want our guests to be comfortable. Should we ask our friends to bring anything, like desserts? That's a good idea. We can have a potluck-style dessert table. It'll be a sweet treat for everyone. I'm getting excited already. Me too. It's going to be a memorable barbecue party. Let's send out the invitations and get everything ready. Sounds like a plan. I can't wait to fire up the grill. Get ready for a delicious feast and lots of laughter. Absolutely. Thanks for agreeing to host the barbecue, Anna. It's my pleasure, John. Let's make it an unforgettable event. Have a great day. You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 8. Have you bought new clothes for the winter? Hi Anna, the weather is getting really cold. Have you bought new clothes for the winter? Yes, I've started shopping for warm winter clothes. That's a good idea. What kind of clothes are you looking for? I'm searching for a cozy winter coat and some thick sweaters. Warm outerwear is essential. Have you considered getting a hat and gloves? Yes, I'm planning to buy a beanie and some gloves to keep my hands warm. Smart choice. Don't forget about a scarf and thermal socks too. Definitely. Scarves and thermal socks will help keep me cozy. Have you thought about getting insulated boots for the cold weather? Yes, I'm looking for waterproof and insulated boots to keep my feet warm and dry. Absolutely. I'm also getting thermal leggings and long-sleeved shirts. I'm thinking of getting a fleece-lined jacket and some thermal underwear. Those will provide extra warmth. Are you considering any accessories? Yes, I'm planning to get earmuffs and a neck warmer for added protection. Great choices. You'll be well prepared for the freezing temperatures. Indeed. It's important to prioritize comfort and protection. It's exciting to have a wardrobe ready for the cold season.
You're welcome, Anna. Take care and stay cozy. Have a great day. You too, John. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Lesson 9. Our kid will be graduating from kindergarten soon. Hi Anna, our kid will be graduating from kindergarten soon. Let's plan a celebration. That's a wonderful idea. Our little one deserves a special day. We can invite family and friends to join the celebration. Yes, it will be a joyous occasion for everyone. Should we have a small gathering at home or rent a venue? Let's have it at home. It will be more intimate and cozy. Great! We'll decorate the house with balloons and streamers. And we can create a photo booth area for fun pictures. That's a fantastic idea. We'll capture precious memories. What about food? Should we have a buffet or order catering? Let's have a buffet with kid-friendly snacks and treats. We can also make a special cake for our little graduate. Absolutely. A cake with a graduation theme will be perfect. Should we plan some games or activities for the kids? Yes, we can set up a craft station and organize a treasure hunt. The kids will have a great time exploring and being creative. We should prepare small graduation favors for the children. Good thinking. They'll love receiving little mementos. Let's also think of a heartfelt speech for our little one. Yes, we'll express how proud we are of their achievements. We can even create a slideshow with their kindergarten memories. That's a lovely idea. It will bring back fond moments. Our kid will feel so loved and celebrated on their special day. They deserve all the praise and recognition for their hard work. Let's start planning and make it a memorable graduation celebration. Absolutely. Our little graduate will remember this day forever. Thank you for agreeing, Anna. It will be a beautiful celebration. You're welcome, John. Let's make it a day to cherish. Have a wonderful day. You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 10. Did you hear that the subway is out of service today? Hi Anna, did you hear that the subway is out of service today? Oh no, really? How are we going to get to work? I'm not sure. We might have to find an alternative transportation method. Maybe we can take the bus or carpool with our colleagues. Good idea. Let's check the bus schedule and see if it aligns with our timings. I hope the buses aren't too crowded during rush hour. We can try to leave a bit earlier to avoid the peak commuting time. That's a smart plan. It might give us a better chance of finding a seat. I'll also check if there are any car sharing services available nearby. Carpooling could be a convenient and cost-effective option. 
Let's see if any of our colleagues live nearby and are willing to share a ride. It's worth a shot. We can save money and reduce our carbon footprint. If all else fails, we can consider taking a taxi or rideshare service. Yes, but that might be a bit more expensive. True, but it can be a last resort if we're running late. Let's hope the subway service resumes soon. It's usually our go-to option. Definitely. Public transportation is usually reliable and convenient. In the meantime, let's plan our alternative transportation carefully. Agreed. We'll figure it out and make it to work on time. Thanks for discussing this with me, John. Let's stay proactive. You're welcome, Anna. We'll make the best of the situation. Have a great day. You too, John. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Anna. Until next time. Lesson 11. I've been playing basketball with some really nice teammates lately. Hi Anna, I've been playing basketball with some really nice teammates lately. That's great to hear. Having friendly teammates makes the game more enjoyable. Absolutely. They're supportive and always encourage each other. It's wonderful to be part of a positive and encouraging team. We have a good mix of experienced and new players. That's ideal. The experienced players can guide and mentor the newcomers. Yes, they're patient and help us improve our skills. It's important to have a supportive and inclusive team environment. Definitely. We all cheer for each other's successes and lift each other up. That camaraderie is what makes team sports so special. We also organize team outings and bonding activities outside of practice. That's a great way to strengthen the team spirit and build friendships. We become more than just teammates, we're like a basketball family. It's amazing how sports can bring people together like that. We share a common passion for basketball, and it unites us. I'm glad you found such a nice group of teammates, John. Thank you, Anna. It's made my basketball experience even better. I hope you continue to have a great time playing with them. I'm sure I will. Thanks for your support, Anna. You're welcome, John. Keep enjoying the game and have a fantastic day. You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 12, I wanted to talk about how much my colleague has helped me lately. Hi Anna, I wanted to talk about how much my colleague has helped me lately. That's wonderful to hear. Having supportive colleagues makes work easier. Absolutely. They have been there for me during challenging times. It's great to have someone you can rely on for assistance. They have shared their knowledge and expertise with me. Learning from experienced colleagues is invaluable. They've also provided guidance and feedback on my projects. 
Constructive feedback helps us grow and improve. I appreciate their willingness to answer my questions. Having someone to turn to for answers is a valuable resource. They've made the transition into the new role much smoother. It's fantastic to have a colleague who genuinely cares about your success. They've gone above and beyond to support and mentor me. That's a sign of a truly exceptional colleague. I'm grateful for all their help and support. It's important to express your gratitude and let them know. I plan to thank them personally for everything they've done. I'm sure they will appreciate your heartfelt appreciation. It's amazing how a supportive colleague can make a difference in your work life. Indeed, they can have a significant impact on your overall job satisfaction. I'm fortunate to have such a helpful colleague by my side. Cherish that relationship and continue to learn from each other. I will. Thanks for listening, Anna. You're welcome, John. It's great to see you have such a positive work experience. Take care and have a wonderful day, Anna. You too, John. See you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Anna. Until next time. Lesson 13. I had a dream last night about traveling to Africa to see lions. Hi Anna, I had a dream last night about traveling to Africa to see lions. Wow, that sounds amazing. Lions are such majestic creatures. I've always been fascinated by African wildlife. It would be incredible to see lions up close in their natural habitat. I imagine the vast savanna and the roar of the lions. The African landscape is breathtaking, and lions are the kings of the wild. I would love to witness their strength and grace firsthand. We could go on a safari and experience the thrill of spotting lions in the wild. That would be a dream come true for me. We could also learn about their behavior and conservation efforts. It's important to protect these magnificent animals and their habitats. We could capture beautiful photos and create lasting memories. Just imagining being in Africa, surrounded by nature and lions, fills me with excitement. It's a dream worth pursuing. Let's start planning our African adventure. We can research the best time to visit and the national parks known for lion sightings. We'll need to consider travel arrangements and accommodations too. Absolutely. It's crucial to plan everything in advance for a smooth trip. And we can also explore other wildlife and cultural experiences in Africa. It would be an enriching journey beyond just seeing lions. Let's make this dream a reality and embark on an unforgettable adventure. I can't wait to witness the beauty of Africa and see lions in their natural habitat. Me too, John. Let's start working towards making it happen. Thank you for sharing my excitement, Anna. It means a lot. You're welcome, John. Let's make memories that will last a lifetime. Have a great day. 
You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 14. I think we'll need more water for our upcoming hiking trip. Hi Anna, I think we'll need more water for our upcoming hiking trip. You're right, staying hydrated is crucial when hiking. We should make sure we have enough water to last the entire trip. Let's calculate how much water we'll need per person per day. It's usually recommended to drink at least 2 liters of water per day while hiking. So, for a two-day trip, we'll need 4 liters of water each. We should also consider the availability of water sources along the trail. If there are water refill stations or natural water sources, we can carry less. That's true. We can bring water purification tablets or a filtration system. It's important to ensure the water is safe to drink from natural sources. We can also pack lightweight water bottles or hydration packs. Hydration packs can be convenient since they allow us to drink on the go. Let's also bring some electrolyte packets to replenish our electrolyte levels. Good idea. They can help prevent dehydration and muscle cramps. We should distribute the weight of the water evenly between our backpacks. That way, it won't feel too heavy on one side. And we can take regular water breaks during the hike to stay hydrated. It's essential to listen to our bodies and drink before we feel thirsty. We can also pack some water-rich snacks like fruits to stay hydrated. Hydration is key for an enjoyable and safe hiking experience. Absolutely. Let's make sure we have everything we need for proper hydration. Thanks for bringing it up, John. It's an important consideration. You're welcome, Anna. Let's prioritize our water supply. Have a great day. You too, John. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Anna. Until next time. Lesson 15. I've been thinking about the location for my graduation party. Hi, Anna. I've been thinking about the location for my graduation party. That's exciting. Have you considered any specific places? I was thinking of hosting it at my house but it might be too small. We could look for a local park or outdoor venue. That's a good idea. Outdoor spaces can accommodate more people. Plus, it would be nice to celebrate in the fresh air. We should check if we need any permits to use the park. It's important to follow the rules and regulations. Another option could be renting a community center or event space. That way, we would have a dedicated area for the party. We should consider the convenience of the location for guests. A central location with ample parking would be ideal. We can also think about the amenities the venue offers. Having access to a kitchen or barbecue area could be useful. I'll start researching available venues and their prices. 
it's smart to compare options and find the best fit for your budget. I'll also ask for suggestions from friends and family. They might know of hidden gems or places with special offers. I want the location to be memorable and enjoyable for everyone. That's a great mindset, John. Your guests will appreciate your thoughtfulness. Thank you, Anna. I want it to be a memorable celebration. I'm sure it will be. Graduation is a significant milestone. I'm excited to celebrate with my loved ones. They'll be thrilled to share this special moment with you. Thanks for discussing this with me, Anna. Your input is valuable. You're welcome, John. I'm happy to help. Have a fantastic party. You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 16, The Garden is so nice. Hi Anna, have you seen the garden? It's so nice. Yes, I noticed. The garden looks absolutely beautiful. The flowers are vibrant and add so much color. I love how well maintained and organized it is. The plants and shrubs are neatly arranged. It's evident that a lot of care and effort went into it. The garden feels like a tranquil oasis. It must be a lovely place to relax and unwind. I enjoy spending time there, surrounded by nature. I can imagine the pleasant aroma of the flowers. The garden attracts butterflies and birds too. It's wonderful to see wildlife thriving in such a serene environment. The garden is a testament to the gardener's skill and dedication. They have created a truly enchanting space. I'm grateful to have such a beautiful garden nearby. It's a treasure to be able to enjoy its beauty. It's inspiring me to start my own garden someday. Gardening can be a fulfilling and therapeutic hobby. I agree. It's a great way to connect with nature. Plus, you can grow your own flowers, herbs, or vegetables. I look forward to experiencing the joy of gardening. I'm sure your garden will be just as lovely. Thank you, Anna. Your encouragement means a lot. You're welcome, John. Enjoy the beauty of the garden. Have a great day. You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 17, Buying a New Earphone Hi Anna, I've been thinking about buying a new earphone. That sounds like a good idea. What are you looking for in an earphone? I want something with good sound quality and durability. Have you thought about whether you prefer wireless or wired earphones? I'm leaning towards wireless for convenience. Wireless earphones can be great for on-the-go use. I also want them to have a long battery life. 
That way, you won't have to worry about charging them frequently. Noise cancellation is another feature I'm interested in. Noise cancellation can help you enjoy your music without distractions. I'll also consider the comfort and fit of the earphones. It's important to find a pair that feels comfortable for long periods. Do you have any recommendations for good earphone brands? Some popular brands known for their quality are Apple, Sony, and Bose. I'll check out their models and read some reviews. That's a good idea. Reviews can give you insights from other users. I'll also compare prices to find the best value for my budget. Finding a balance between quality and affordability is essential. I'm excited about getting a new pair of earphones. It's always nice to have a good set for music and other activities. Thanks for discussing this with me, Anna. Your input is helpful. You're welcome, John. I'm glad I could assist you. Enjoy your new earphones. You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 18. Have you heard the rumor about our new boss? Hi, Anna. Have you heard the rumor about our new boss? Yes, I have. What have you heard? I heard that our new boss is extremely strict. Really? I wonder if it's just a rumor or if there's some truth to it. Some people say that the new boss has high expectations. It might be challenging to meet those expectations. I hope the rumor isn't true and our new boss is fair. We should give our new boss a chance before forming opinions. That's true. It's important not to judge based on rumors alone. We should approach the situation with an open mind. Maybe the new boss has different management styles. It could be an opportunity for us to learn and grow. I hope our new boss creates a positive work environment. A supportive and encouraging boss can make a big difference. Let's wait and see how things unfold. Yes, time will reveal the true nature of our new boss. In the meantime, let's focus on doing our best at work. Exactly. Our performance is within our control. It's important to stay professional and dedicated. Agreed. Let's continue to work hard and support each other. Thanks for discussing this with me, Anna. It helps to talk about it. You're welcome, John. We're in this together. Have a great day. You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Lesson 19. Our kid's electronic toy car needs repair. Hi Anna, our kid's electronic toy car needs repair. Oh no. What seems to be the problem with it? The car doesn't move forward or backward anymore. It could be an issue with the motor or the wiring. 
Do you think we can fix it ourselves? We can try. Let's first check if there's a loose connection. Good idea. Maybe a wire got disconnected. We can also check the batteries to ensure they're working. If the batteries are fine, we might need to open the car and inspect the motor. We'll need some basic tools for that. I have a screwdriver set. It should come in handy. Great. Let's gather the tools and open up the car. Be careful not to damage any internal components. We'll take it step by step and be cautious. Once we open it, we can check if any wires are loose or damaged. If we find any issues, we can try reconnecting or replacing them. It might be helpful to have the user manual for reference. We can look for the manual online if we don't have a physical copy. Let's see if we can find any troubleshooting tips there. If all else fails, we can consider taking it to a professional repair shop. That could be a good option if we can't fix it ourselves. Our kid will be happy to see the toy car working again. Yes, it will bring a smile to their face. Let's get started on the repair. I'll grab the tools. Thank you, Anna. Your help is much appreciated. You're welcome, John. Let's get that toy car back on the road. Have a great day. You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time. Triple X. Lesson 20. I've been thinking about donating our old clothes. Hi Anna, I've been thinking about donating our old clothes. That's a great idea. It's good to declutter and help others. I'll start by going through our closets and gathering the clothes we no longer wear. We can separate them into different piles based on their condition. Clothes in good condition can be donated, while torn ones can be discarded. We should also consider donating seasonally appropriate clothes. That way, they can be useful for people in need right away. Do you know any organizations or charities that accept clothing donations? I'll do some research to find local donation centers or shelters. It's important to choose reputable organizations that distribute the clothes properly. We can also ask friends or neighbors if they know any good donation options. That's a good idea. They might have personal recommendations. Once we find a suitable place, we can drop off the clothes. It's a simple yet meaningful way to give back to the community. I'm glad we're doing this together, Anna. Me too, John. It's a small act of kindness that can make a difference. We might inspire others to do the same. That would be wonderful. Helping others is contagious. Let's make a habit of periodically donating our old clothes. Yes, it's a great way to keep our closets organized and support others. Thank you for discussing this with me, Anna.
Your support means a lot. You're welcome, John. I'm happy to be involved. Have a fantastic day. You too, Anna. Take care and see you soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, John. Until next time.